Do Christians need to go to church? I mean, is it required that I go to church to be a Christian? Or you might ask, is it a sin not to go to church? Now, those are very important questions that affect a lot of people. Because in 2023, it was estimated that 68% of Americans claim to be Christians, yet only 28% regularly attend religious services. That means that there are at least 100 million people who claim to be Christians yet don't go to church. You know what that means? It means that most people who claim to be Christians don't actually go to church. So is this question relevant for us today? Oh, you better believe it is. Do Christians need to go to church? Welcome back to the Down to Earth Christian. I want to give a special thank you to all of the supporters of this ministry. Thank you very much. Your financial support is extremely helpful in getting the message out to more and more people. And on that note, some of you asked if we had t-shirts that you could purchase in support of the channel. Well, as a matter of fact, we do now. Guys, we have t-shirts available for you. They're on our store you can check them out. There is a link down in the description below, or you can scan the QR code that is on the screen here. Now, before you start typing in the comments, we don't go to church, we are the church. I understand your sentiment, but let me tell you that I'm using the word church here in the biblical sense of the assembly. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18. So, do we have to go and assemble with fellow Christians? Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another." so much the more as we see the day approaching. Or, as the ESV puts it, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. God expects His people to assemble together. Now, this text is not talking about those who physically can't attend a worship service or a Bible class because of illness, because of hospitalization, because of imprisonment, or because of train derailment, right? You know what I'm getting at. There are people who physically cannot be there. That is not what this text is talking about. He's talking about folks who decide not to attend assemblies on a regular basis. Did you notice what the text said there? Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. This was already taking place in the first century, and it's taking place today as well. Guys, it shouldn't have happened back then, and it shouldn't be happening now. So let me give you five reasons why we should be assembling with the saints every chance we get. The first reason that we should go to church is to fulfill the commandments of God. We already saw earlier right, that we're not to forsake our assembling together, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, but we are also commanded to edify or to build one another up. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Part of what we do when we assemble is to stir one another up for love and good deeds, to encourage one another, to, to build each other up. And it's amazing what simply being there will do for other people, how just your presence in the building, your smiling, shiny face in church encourages other people more than you might ever imagine. And so can we really say that we are edifying others when we're absent most of the time, or when we attend so infrequently that we hardly even know the other members, or, or when, we, when we don't notice that others have stopped coming as well, because we're not there. You know, there's another command that attending worship service helps us fulfill, and that is seeking the kingdom first, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
I know that we all have various priorities in our lives, things that we have to get done, but we, we must simply put them into the proper order. You know, many Christians, in an effort to seek the kingdom first, they don't accept jobs that will require them to miss services. And yet somehow, God still provides for them and they still have all of their needs met. Many Christians, in an effort to seek the kingdom first, will not play sports or not allow their children to play sports if it's going to conflict with church. You know, it's one thing to miss because of an unforeseen emergency that takes place, but should we miss church or Bible class just to make money or play a game? I mean, can we really say that we're faithfully keeping God's commands when we consistently miss most of the services of the church. If we love Jesus, right, we will keep his commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. And here's another reason why we should attend every service. It's to help the church function properly. The local church needs workers, right? Because the church, it's like a body and every individual has a part to play in that. We all have a part to share in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16. And no one can really say that they're not needed or that that person isn't needed or I'm not needed or any of those types of things, we are all needed because we're all part of the body. My left hand can't say to my right hand, I have no need of you, you're the right hand. Or my ear say to my mouth, I have no need of you because you're not an ear, you're just a mouth. Right? We, we can't be doing that. We are all needed because we are all part of the body. And to function properly, a congregation needs people there to help both spiritually and physically, such as leading songs, prayers, reading scripture, or preaching. We need people to perform those tasks. We need people to teach the children's Bible class and the adult Bible classes. We need people to prepare communion and clean the building. We need people to visit the sick, to help the needy, to teach the lost, and to strengthen the weak. A congregation is kind of like a baseball team. How would it be if some of the players decided on game day, they're just not going to show up? Or they never show up for practice. How effective would that team be? Probably not very effective. Congregations right, with an active, engaged membership have a much greater opportunity to do more for the Lord than a congregation with a less engaged, less active membership. So to adapt John F. Kennedy's statement, ask not what your congregation can do for you, but what you can do for your congregation. And when you get plugged in to your local church, I am sure that you are going to find Jesus's statement true. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The fourth reason that we should go to church every time the doors are open is to be a good example for others. Show yourself in all respects a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that the opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. Now, that letter was written specifically to Titus, the evangelist on the island of Crete. He was to be this example to the people. But what is an example? An example is something that other people follow. When we follow Titus's example, other people can follow our example. Right? We are always being an example to other people, either for good or for bad. And everybody knows right, that Christians are supposed to go to church. And when we don't, it can open us up to just criticism. You know, trying to tell somebody that they need Jesus when we don't even go to church, mm, how good do you think that's really going to turn out? Jesus said, you're a light to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, 
Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. There are many ways that we need to let our light shine out to the world, but one of those ways is through our faithful church attendance, and that is foundational for everything else. And when we put God first in our lives, other things are going to fall into place and our light is going to shine bright in a very dark world. When we come to church or to Bible class on a regular basis, we set a good example for babes in Christ, for the spiritually weak, for visitors, and, and even for our own children and our grandchildren. When we prioritize church over other things in our life, it can be a very positive influence on our friends, on our relatives, on our neighbors, on our employer, on our coach, right? They may admire your conviction and your devotion to the Lord. They may even wonder, what's so great about church? They might even ask you, what's so great? about church. You know, we can't escape being an influence on others, but the question is, will we be a good influence or will we be a bad influence? If you're getting value from this video, would you mind going ahead and giving it a thumbs up, a like, and consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. It really helps out the channel. And now to our fifth reason why we ought to go to church every time the doors are open, is because it's good for us. Researchers at Vanderbilt University have found that those who regularly attend church services have less stress. Psychology Today reported that studies have shown being part of a congregation results in better sleep. The World Journal of Clinical Cases at the National Library of Medicine reports that Canadian researchers found that people who attend church have a 22% lower risk of depression than non-attenders. And I saved the best for last. The Institute for Family Studies found that couples who regularly attend church have more frequent and more satisfying intimacy and are 47% less likely to divorce. So do Christians have to go to church? Well, I think the answer is very clear from Scripture. Yes, we have to go to church, but not because it's some rigorous ritual that we have to keep legalistically. Sure, there's commands to do it, and there's commands that we fulfill when we do it, but God knows what's best for His people, and He has designed us. He has created us not to be lone wolves out in the wilderness, not to be a maverick, not to be a lone ranger, but He has, he has created us to need and to want community. So if you're in the Sandpoint area and you're looking for a Bible-believing, loving family of Christians who are striving their best to love one another and to spread the gospel, come check us out. There is a link down in the description below, or you can scan the QR code that is on the screen here to get more information. We would love to meet you. We picked out this video right over here for you to go ahead and watch next. I will see you over there in just a second.